times and I'm going to kind of, we can even start playing it. Good morning. Is my microphone on? No? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's try this. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I think everybody's sleeping. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You're still so you're still sleeping. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. There we go. All right. Thank you so much. Welcome to St. Barnabas. Um, thank you so much for coming. The second week of Easter, and we also celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. So let's stand and join in our opening song. No scheme. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. We continue our journey of the Easter octave today, our eighth day, celebrating um, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and allowing those graces to really penetrate our lives as well. We begin this Holy Mass by first acknowledging our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand and what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And I invite our children to come forward for, for children's liturgy of the word. Lord, we ask you to bless your children today. Open their minds and hearts to your love for them and the studying of your word. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God bless kids.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one mind and one heart, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, and those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, When the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, 
my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Just real quick side note, put this painting up here today. Uh, we had bought them for our retreats that we run. Sometimes it's nice to have some great biblical images um, to reflect upon and look upon as we're going through a retreat day with people. So uh, this is one of the ones that we had bought. We used it at the men's retreat. This is an image, a famous old painting of um, Thomas. When Jesus says to him, Thomas, it is I, place your hand into my side and uh, don't be unbelieving, but believe. So Thomas really touches that resurrected Christ from the dead and has that encounter with him. And he proclaims, my Lord and my God, it is you. You are risen and that changes his life. That has a great impact on his life. So if you want to stop up after Mass, take a look at it. It shows that very vivid, vivid image of him putting his finger literally into the side of Jesus. And it makes you want to squirm and uncomfortable. But, but that's the point. It's meant to be like, this is so real and it's just so amazing and it's unbelievable. That's, that's meant to be the power of the resurrection, it's meant to have that same transformative effect on our lives too. Uh, last week was just unbelievable. Uh, I don't, it's the grace of God. I know that like, I owe a huge thank you to Deacon Mike with RCIA, to our music ministry, to our volunteers who help decorate, to just like our liturgical ministers, to those who run the fish fry, just everything that went on during Lent, but especially during Holy Week, those days from Holy Thursday evening, that Mass of the Lord's Supper through Easter Sunday just felt like such an explosion of grace. So if you were here for some of that, it was just amazing. And obviously thank God for pouring the Holy Spirit out upon us in those most holy days of the year. And especially on Easter Sunday too as we celebrated the resurrection last Sunday. But a huge thank you to all of you who have participated in making it a great week. Um, it was amazing, truly. And I hope those graces can continue to flow through us and, and with us this week. I had a lot of people share with me, email me, or tell me after just like some of the experiences that they had. And I love that people are willing to do this. I would encourage all of you to do it. Certainly you're welcome to share with me, but you share with each other. Write down some of the graces you experienced during Holy Week and Easter Sunday, how God touched your life there or what was moving in your heart and share that with somebody. We wanna get in the habit of acknowledging those graces and, and sharing them with, with each other. Those are powerful movements of the Lord. We welcome today Allie and her family. She is going to be making her first communion. Um, we have a few single first communions that have asked to do it on a separate day, so um, we warmly welcome Allie today and her family for first communion. We'll have the big mass um, in about a month, in early May. So we're welcome to you and your family, and also to our three baptisms today, and to your family. So good to, good to have you guys. Again, these graces of the sacraments are an overflow of that resurrection and new life that Jesus gives to us. Just a re quick recap from last week. Last week I preached about, I often talk about this Paschal candle, so this represents for us Jesus risen. We light the Paschal candle on the Easter vigil at night, and we see that light of the Paschal candle being processed into the church, and we announce three times the light of Christ, and we all respond, thanks be to God. And then after that happens, we all light our individual tapers um, from the Paschal candle, from the resurrection of Christ, and then we light each other's candles. And so amidst of the darkness, we have the flame of light alive by the power of Jesus' resurrection. And this is what we want to continue to reflect on this week and as we go forward in the Easter season. So again, we're at the end of the octave, but we have... 50 days of celebrating the resurrection of Christ and celebrating his resurrection. 40 days of fasting and prayer during Lent, 50 days of feasting and celebration and, and, and focusing on the resurrection. So church isn't so bad after all, right? So the point that I made last Sunday that I want to continue to make this Sunday is we don't, we want the resurrection of Jesus 
We want that new life that, that happened, that resurrected body of Christ, him coming alive from the dead. We believe that's transformative for the world, that that will give the world new life, that that will propel us into eternal life in Christ. But we don't want that just to be something that happened to Jesus. That grace of the resurrection is meant to penetrate and to affect very personally and deeply our own lives, our personal lives, our families, and, and the lives of the, the world around us. So we want, those, we want that resurrection to have that true impact on your life and on my life. And I, I, I asked everybody to reflect last Sunday, like, you know, where has that happened in your life or is that flame of the resurrection alive in your own life? As we get into the gospel today, we can see actually with Jesus' first disciples that after he rose, he had been already risen for a week. We see that they were still locked in fear. They were held in shame and embarrassment. They were terrified of being put to death. They just saw their, their friend who they trusted die shame, shamefully like on a cross, naked on a cross, vulnerably, weakly, suffocated on this cross, was scourged and beaten. Um, and they just saw this horrible event. They abandoned their friend. They didn't have the courage to stand up for him. They didn't have the courage to journey with him in that, in that pain and suffering. They fled. Now they're locked in fear. They feel their guilt and their shame. They're embarrassed. They're afraid that they're going to be put to death. And Jesus has risen, but yet they're still in like this terrible place of their life. So this is, I think, what I just invite all of us to reflect upon. And, the res and Jesus risen meets them there in that place. This is what's important. I'll share a little story. I hate to talk about snow, but I'm going to do it because it's a story that came to mind. And I know the sun is finally out and we're finally like spring, spring, spring. But I'm going to draw us back to winter for one second. When I was um, in sixth grade, I was, uh, I was always like an overly energetic, kind of like, like to play my sports, do things, all that. But we would we'd go sled riding. We really went sled riding. You know, like we didn't screw around. And uh, we, we would get excited, the couple feet high of snow, whatever it was. I grew up in Strongsville. We would get our sleds out. We'd go up to the hill, and we would just go at it. You know, how can we build ramps or just, like, all pile on one sled or just, like, do anything we can to make it the most dangerous experience possible, you know? And so the hill's crowded. We're all out there. We're just being boys, all that kind of stuff, playing and having fun, overdoing it for sure. And as you would expect... Um, I get in, a, in an accident. I come down the hill, we're doing more than we should, and, and I collide with another sled, and I get hit by several others, and I have a black eye immediately puffing out, and the, the egg comes out, and I'm bleeding on the one side, and everything is just, you know, probably had a little minor concussion, whatever it might be. And I remember, like, telling my friend's mom, I said, can we just stay? Like, I'll be fine. You know, don't, don't worry about me. And she's like, She's like, no, we're going home. I'm like, oh, man, I just ruined the day, you know, all that kind of stuff. I felt so embarrassed. I felt that shame of just like, yeah, just whatever. I was just like, ah, I'm being stupid, and, and my mom's going to kill me, you know, one of those moments. And so we're all, like, driving home, and my friend's mom, we pull into our driveway, and I'm thinking, all right, she's going to let me have it. Here we go. You know, why were you doing that? You're horsing around too much, whatever it might be, that sort of thing. And I get out of my friend's car, and I walk up to my front door, and my mom opens the door. And I'll never forget, she looked at me um, with so much, like, tender love and compassion, and her heart was clearly, like, moved by the fact that I was bleeding and had a black eye and, and things were wrong. And she just came up and embraced me, and I think we both had tears coming down our eyes. And I just remember in that moment, um, it's like all that shame and that pain and that guilt just kind of flushed away. That embarrassment, whatever it was, it was just kind of taken from me in that moment. I experienced in my own embarrassment and shame being loved. I experienced my mom loving me there. And it was a, it was a, it was a good moment. In a sense, it was kind of like a healing, a healing moment for me. When we have these apostles in this upper room, in their guilt, in their shame, in their pain, in their sin, in their suffering, in their darkness, whatever it might be, it tells us that Jesus comes and stands right in their midst. So Jesus comes resurrected, comes right into that place of shame, right into that place of embarrassment. And he could have easily said to them, after all the miracles I performed for you, like I even rose a dead person. I even healed like blind people and, and limbs came out of people, you know, when they were missing them. Like out of all that, you know, you, you couldn't have just stayed with me. You know, he could have said so many things to them. Thanks for being great friends, like whatever it might be. 
you left me there by myself. But rather he says to them right in that midst of their darkness, he says, peace be with you. He gives them God's peace, God's love. And he shows them his hands and his feet, the wounds that he bore for them that are still there but sort of healed in the resurrected body. And really, he took on himself their shame, their pain, their suffering. And so he's showing them the wounds in his hands inside, just like we have in this image up here too. And he's saying, see these wounds, it is me, believe. He says to them again, peace be with you. And then to take it a step further, he breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. He gives them the love of God. He breathes that love of God on them, right in the midst of their pain, their darkness, their doubt, their fear, their shame, their embarrassment. He breathes that spirit upon them. Peace be with you twice. Shows them his resurrected body. And then to take it one step further, he says, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. So out of this place that's like, out of this like terrible place of their life, Christ is transforming them. Christ is redeeming them. Christ is loving them. He's giving them the Holy Spirit. He's making them new. His resurrection is being applied to their life. It's having a direct impact on their life. And then he says to them, whoever sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whoever sins you retain are retained. So Jesus is then empowering them to go and heal and forgive sins. Uh, Christ gives the church authority for that through the sacraments to forgive sins, confession, and you know we know the whole story there. This, this, is a, this gospel and a lot of the gospels after the resurrection aren't just about Jesus being raised, but they're about that resurrection having a direct impact on his followers and changing their lives. Loving them in their darkness and giving them new life. That's what, that's what we want to experience with Christ. That's what we have places of shame. We have places of doubt. Thomas was doubting and Jesus said, Thomas, it's me. Put your hand in my side. Believe, Thomas, believe. He's making him new. He's making him new. We have doubts. We have embarrassment. We have shame. We have darkness. We have places that we're locked in fear in our lives. Maybe sins of the past that we can't forgive ourselves of and we don't love ourselves and we just kind of condemn and hate what we've done or whatever it might be. Maybe it's just something in the natural world. There's been some bouts of illness or whatever it might be in our life and there's just a lot of shame and pain and hurt there. The gospel reminds us that Jesus can bring light into that, that he can transform that. And we really want to give him that space to meet us there. And that was my encouragement last Sunday was to come on some of our retreats where we can really give God a whole day to work with us in our personal life and within the community. But in the meantime, take this gospel to prayer. Please open it up today or this week. Really try to put yourself in that scene. Really try to let the Lord bring his resurrection to you there. Identify that place of your heart, of your life, that you feel that shame, you feel that embarrassment, that maybe it starts to swell up a little bit. Try to, like, put yourself there. Let Jesus stand there. Let him say to you, peace be with you. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Let him breathe the Holy Spirit upon you. Let him love you there. Let him do what my mom did for me. Let him give that gift of new life to you in the resurrection. As we receive this from Jesus, as we experience this from him, we can start to look back on our life like I did and say, oh yeah, in that moment when my mom did that for me, that was God doing that for me. I had another moment where my dad did something similar. And I sh I'm not going to go into it now because of time, but that was Jesus loving me there. Maybe other people have done that. That was God trying to heal me, trying to help me of my heart. As we receive that from the Lord, we can then stand in somebody else's pain and suffering with them. We can stand in their shame with them. We can breathe new life into them in Christ. And that's where the resurrection can actually change the world, change our lives, change our parish and the church around us. Amen. Stand up. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn our needs and petitions to our Father in heaven. Our response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer, that on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of governments will work to ensure that all people can live in peace with the freedom to worship God and pursue holiness, we pray. Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection would move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation, we pray. Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those trapped in confusion or doubt, that they may be filled with the truth and the light of the risen Christ, we pray. Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the dying and for the souls of all the faithful departed, that they be given eternal rest in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with the confidence and certainty that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Carl Heinel, Joseph Urjevic, Stephen Hoagland, and Joseph Dorn, who died this week. May they and all the faithful departed enjoy a heavenly reunion with our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And for Charles and Dorothy Herbick, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Risen, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our lives and needs and petitions to you this day. We thank you for the gift of the resurrection. Help us to receive all those graces you desire to pour into our lives. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity of your dear. Sorrowful passion. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. For our good and for all his holy church. Amen. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and to in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. you take away the sins of the world, misery and obedience. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, misery and obedience. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. ask everyone to be seated for just a minute as we receive our first communion today for Allie. Jesus Christ, my 
Sing that with me.
all together we sing our God reigns. Our God Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts through Christ our Lord. Stop by our cafeteria today after Mass for Donut Sunday. Enjoy some time uh, conversation and a good donut together. And in honor of Divine Mercy Sunday, which is today, there is a holy hour um, from 3 to 4 o'clock. This is a beautiful way to recall the hour of Christ's death and venerate the Divine Mercy image on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Have a wonderful uh, weekend, and I look forward to continuing to journey with you in this Easter season. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.
you have.